Thank you all for coming uh, to the Neutron Quality of Service Features and Future Roadmap Talk. I'm Victor Howard. I'm a principal engineer at Comcast. Hello, I'm Sławek. I'm working in uh, OVH company as DevOps operator and, op admin and developer of OpenStack. And I'm uh, Miguel Angel Ajo. I work at Red Hat in the Neutron team. And I'm going to, um, uh, to talk about the, the first about the agenda that we have for today. We're going to talk a little bit about what we did in, uh, in Liberty and at where QS for Neutron started and uh, what we did in, in Mitaka and what we, we plan for Newton and beyond. So, uh, uh, during, sorry, let me close that thing in the middle. Yep. Uh, during Liberty, we built uh, a model for QoS in, in Neutron uh, that it's, it's based in policies and policies are built by rules. At that time, uh, we only had one rule, which uh, it was one with limit. Uh, but the idea is that you can, um, you can build quality of service policies with rules and then attach those policies to networks. If you attach a policy to a network, all the ports on that network uh, that belong to instances are going to be configured with the specific uh, quality of service policy details. Uh, if you modify uh, any rule of the policy, those ports uh, have, uh, will be updated in, in real time. Uh, and you could also attach specific ports to a specific polit policies as long as your tenant had access to that policy or if you are the administrator that's, that was also allowed. So, uh, as Miguel said, uh, in Libert Liberty was the first release with quality of service in Neutron. It was on, uh, there was only one type of rule uh, available. It was egress bandwidth limit. It was supported only by ML2 plugin and two of three main L2 agents. It was supported by OpenV switch and SRIOV agent. There was no support for uh, Linux bridge agent in, uh, for QoS uh, in Liberty. Uh, uh, short remind uh, at the beginning how in Neutron, how quality of service works uh, in overall. First, uh, if you want to use quality of service, first you need to create, uh, you need to create policy. Policy is kind of container for, for rules. Uh, second step is to create uh, bandwidth rule, for example, bandwidth limit rule. Uh, to bandwidth limit rule, you need to provide uh, max bandwidth limit value with kilobits per second, and optionally max uh, burst uh, in kilobits. And the third parameter here is uh, policy to which rule should be associated. And last step is uh, to apply this policy with, rule, uh, with rules uh, to port or network. If it's applied to network, it will be uh, automatically applied to all ports uh, in this network. So uh, on this picture, there is, let's say, uh, in general, how OpenV switch uh, is connecting uh, virtual machine to, to the network. And in such case, uh, OpenV switch agent will uh, apply bandwidth limit rule uh, policy by, execute, uh, by executing two commands on OVS VSCTL tool. First command will, uh, apply, will configure bandwidth limit and second command will uh, create, uh, configure a boost uh, value if it's provided by user. And now, uh, as I said before, in Mitaka, uh, we provided also support for, uh, in Linux bridge agent for this quality of service rules. And now, uh, now I want to tell a little bit uh, more about how it, was, uh, how it was done. So Linux bridge agent is using traffic control mechanism mm, from Linux uh, directly, because for example, OpenV switch is also underneath using uh, traffic control, but uh, it's kind of wrapper for TC uh, API. 
In Linux Bridge Agent, we are using uh, traffic control directly, and we are using uh, policing on ingress uh, QDisk. QDisk is uh, kind, of, kind of queue for packets. Uh, whenever packets, kernel wants to send packets to the network, the packets are in queue in this, this QDisk, and uh, some algorithm is deciding which and how many packets can be sent. There is plenty of algorithms available in traffic control um, for QDisks. There are classless, classful algorithms uh, with different uh, configuration options and so on. One thing which can be confusing, and in fact was <laughs> for me at the beginning when I started working on it, why for when we want to provide support for limiting outgoing traffic, we are using uh, ingress, uh, ingress QDisk for that. And answer is quite simple, it depends on point of view. Traffic which is outgoing from virtual machine, from virtual machine point of view, is in fact incoming to TAP interface uh, from bridge point of view. And if we are talking about traffic control in Linux, we need to look on it from bridge perspective. That's, uh, that's why it's, there is this change of directions, let's say, and uh, it's quite important to remember uh, because uh, I made this mistake and uh, Phil's version was, uh, was made in wrong direction, in fact. Mm. As I said, there is many QDisk algorithms available, but uh, for policing ingress on ingress QDisk, this traffic control is using uh, TBF, so token bucket filter QDisk. It's one of the simplest classless uh, algorithms, how it works. Uh, in general, there is some kind of bucket which is collecting tokens. Tokens are produced by kernel in each tick. Uh, there is also queue of packets. Packets which kernel want to send are in queue in this, this line. And uh, packet can be sent to the network. Uh, packet, if packet uh, want to be, will be, must, must be sent to the network, it uh, need to obtain packets, uh, tokens from, from this bucket. If there is not enough tokens for, for to send packet, packet is waiting in this, this line. Uh, after it can wait after some configured time, and after this time, packets, if they are not sent still, they are just dropped. Uh, the size of this bucket of tokens is defined by a parameter called burst, it's quite important because uh, to, to configure it in proper, uh, proper value for this uh, parameter, because if it will be too low, then bandwidth, uh, bandwidth, bandwidth limit will never be achieved. It will be, real bandwidth limit will be always lower than wanted one. If burst uh, will be too high, then uh, too many packets uh, will have available tokens and uh, real bandwidth limit uh, can be higher than expected. Example how Linux Bridge agent is uh, applying such rule, uh, bandwidth limit rule on host. Uh, for rule configured in Neutron in, with command like on this slide, Linux Bridge agent will execute two commands in t on TC. First command will enable ingress uh, QDisk, and second command will conf configure filter to match all protocols and, uh, with, and police it with rate given, by, uh, given in Neutron API and burst given in Neutron MP MP uh, API. Third parameter here uh, is MTU. It's uh, max uh, size of packets which can be handled by this filter. Bigger packets will be, will be automatically dropped. So, uh, finally, as I said, in Mitaka, quality of service uh, has got egress bandwidth limit supported by all three agents, uh, L2 agents from ML2 plugins. OpenV switch agent, SRIOV agent, and also Linux bridge agent now supports uh, bandwidth limit rule. At the end, I want to say about two, let's say, side effects which we achieved uh, during working on this uh, bandwidth limiting for Linux Bridge Agent. First of them was uh, provide support for L2 extension drivers for Linux Bridge Agent. 
it's uh, mechanism introduced in Liberty also, but it, uh, it was supported by OpenV switch and SRIOV in Liberty. Now, as QoS is implemented uh, as such driver, we need to provide uh, support for these uh, extensions also for Linux Bridge Agent. And second thing is that uh, we provide also support for Linux Bridge Agent in full stack tests uh, because there was also tests only for OpenV switch. Uh, now there are some tests for Linux Bridge Agent also. So uh, new in Mitaka uh, is the role-based access control. In the Liberty release, um, <clears throat> policies were shared across all tenants. Uh, what role-based access control allows you to do in Mataka is to assign um, cross policy to a specific project. There's also a few things new in uh, Neutron that are coming up. Uh, we're going to talk about DSCP marking rules and ingress bandwidth limiting. Um, we uh, wanted to add DSCP markings for Comcast because we, uh, we, we want to prioritize traffic and mark traffic so that certain types of traffic get more attention than others, and also for security reasons, sometimes we want to only allow certain types of traffic uh, into various uh, spots on the network. Uh, to implement DSCP marking, we modified the uh, Neutron client. Um, also, well, we modified the API. Uh, this is the Neutron client uh, creating a policy, uh, then a, uh, creating a marking rule, and uh, assigning it to that policy, and then assigning the policy to a port. This is kind of uh, what happens behind the scenes here. A user through the client or through the API will request that a DSCP mark be added. Um, then the OV OVS driver will send an RPC message to the compute. Um, it receives the RPC message. Um, then through the OVS agent, um, the, uh, the mark is added to the port. This is kind of a view of uh, how DSCP sits alongside of the bandwidth marketing. Um, <clears throat> bandwidth marking rule. Uh, so they both both are attached to policy. Um, the the rule uh, the policy can have multiple rules, and the policy can also be as associated with multiple ports. Okay, so uh, another feature that is being working on for, uh, for Newton actually slow is the one taking it. Um, is the, um, the ingress bandwidth limiting? We, we in, in Liberty we introduced the um, uh, the bandwidth limit rules, but they were all egress because it seemed to be the, the most common case. Uh, but in in other cases, you can have uh, applications that uh, behave as uh, data consumers from the network. So. Uh, you may want to limit the amount of bandwidth that they that they consume from the network. This is the the, the proposed implementation. It will probably look like this. We have to sort out uh, a few details, like uh, SRIOV, for example. As far as we know, is not able to to limit on on ingress. Uh, to, to the policy on, on, on ingress. So we will have to see how to do that. Uh, another option is to introduce another type of rule, but I don't know. From the usability point of view, I, I don't like that. We'll see. And um, these are uh, other um, RFEs that are uh, proposed currently for for uh, for QoS, um, we have a uh, minimum bandwidth uh, support, uh, and, and I, I will explain that in more detail. But uh, it's like two parts, and we also have uh, requests for traffic traffic classification, uh, rate limiting, VLAN, uh, VLAN priority marking, and some. More stuff. I, I will talk in more detail in the next slides, but let me start with the minimum bandwidth limit. Um, the idea behind minimum bandwidth limit is that if you have um, 
competing data flows in the, in the same hypervisor to start. Uh, you can, uh, le let's see this start point. Uh, the left bar is one port for an instance in, in this hypervisor that has a 10 gig uh, interface. And the right bar here down is uh, another interface from another instance. And this other one is, is not pushing packets. So if you have no policy uh, and both start pushing packets at the same rate, depending on the protocol, but eventually they will converge to, to something like this. Uh, if, if you uh, express a, a minimum bandwidth guarantee on the port A and you say, uh, I want this port to have a minimum bandwidth of eight gigabits uh, when they both are pushing packets uh, at the same rate, the port A is going to be prioritized. So this is uh, what happens in the hypervisor. But you could, if, if you don't uh, involve a scheduling in, in, in this equation, uh, you could end up having ports that have minimum bandwidth guarantees that are, that the, the total sum of them are above the, the, the link bandwidth. So you can oversubscribe your, your hypervisor. So this is an example of three, three hypervisors and uh, four instances. One has uh, eight, eight uh, gigabit minimum, another one has a seven gigabit minimum, and another one has a three gigabit minimum. So if we start uh, scheduling those, we, we need to coordinate with the, with the Nova scheduler to make sure that if we want a, a strict bandwidth guarantee, they don't oversubscribe any hypervisor. So the first one could go to the first node. The, there's a node bandwidth there. Uh, if we schedule the, the next one that has seven gigabit, that one can go to, to, to any of the, of the other three nodes. And if we uh, schedule the third one that had a requirement of three gigabits, uh, it could then go to this node, but it could go to, to this one because there's still enough bandwidth, or it could have landed this one. And finally, I, I will show the case where, uh, where there's an instance with a port with no, with no requested guarantee. So this instance could go in, in any of them uh, because it, it really doesn't matter uh, as long as it doesn't have a minimum uh, bandwidth request. Um, one limitation of, of this is that uh, once, from, from our point of view, is that when the, the instances are already scheduled to, to a hypervisor, we won't be able to um, to modify the policy, uh, at least for for first for a first, for an initial version, because if you um, uh, if the uh, scheduling details uh, and and the amount of resources are in control uh, by Nova, uh, we will then know if modifying a policy to to raise a bandwidth limit is going to oversubscribe an old. So we we should at least prevent adding more minimum bandwidth to, to a policy. And so yes, this is what I was saying. We are on, um, working with the, with the Nova community uh, uh, and the, the work that they are doing in the scheduler with the generic resource pools to introduce a new resource that it will be tracked by the, by the scheduler and that Neutron will be reporting. So this is the proposal about uh, minimum bandwidth uh, guarantees. Um, we have another proposal uh, about traffic class classification. This one probably will take uh, will take more time because uh, some of it it has m m more moving parts. 
but um, the idea is that eventually we could be able to create rules in a policy that are attached to a to an specific uh, traffic classifier. So you could uh, put on a higher priority your control traffic. In this uh, example, is the SSH traffic. So if your uh, instance is uh, overloaded by requests of other types or other types of traffic, you will be able to, to, to control it yet. And so this is how it will look like in, in the higher level. We have to, to sort out the details about how to, uh, to do this specific part because it's something that it's shared across different, uh, across different projects the, and we don't want to implement the same thing in different ways. It's better to do it just once. Uh, from the feedback that I'm having uh, uh, during the summit, and uh, we are open to more, to more feedback, uh, I, I had this, this proposal that I, I want to discuss upstream of um, setting a default uh, policy for a tenant. So when you create your tenant, you set up this is your default policy. Any resource that you create is going to be attached to that policy by default. And the tenant, of course, will be able to change that policy if it has access to, to other policies, mm, to that one. There's another proposal to, um, to do, uh, uh, to tag the priority on the VLAN packet. So instead of doing L3 like the DSTP work does, we could do it on, on level two. That could be leveraged in your data center, for example, to, to prioritize the traffic at, at the tenant level. Uh, if you are using VLAN, tagging for provider, uh, sorry, for tenant networks. But initially, the idea is to use it for provider networks. Um, There is another proposal that is still more blurry yet, but we are looking at it, is to, to limit, to have some uh, way to, to limit the total external uh, bandwidth that uh, tenant is, is using. You can do that now if you go to your router port and set policies on, on, the, on the router ports but maybe it could be interesting to have some higher level abstraction to do that and not to handle the, the low level details. And finally, there is another one uh, we are looking at that it's uh, using e, uh, ECN, uh, con congestion notification to, to do things more softer than uh, policing, that's what we are doing now, and maybe de detecting uh, congestion situations or depending on, on how you set rules to to notify the, the other side that you are congested and it has to slow down, but that's still quite blurry. And that's it, you have the... Um, uh, Another presentation about DHCP policing that our colleagues from Comcast did the, the last day, and you have a link to this presentation. And thank you very much for coming. And if you have any questions, feedback, you are, we are really glad to hear. Hi, hi thank, you for, uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, just a question of clarification. Um, you mentioned in the first set of slides um, rate limiting, um, you know, between the the, the guests, um, and then later in these last sets you were talking about policing and dropping. Is your intention to rate limit, meaning kind of like a hard fix set, and then you start to throw packets away once a, once a um, once there's congestion, or are you talking more about shaping and kind of queuing up that excess? Um, and waiting until there's a little space to... 
we we have different that's something also that has been mentioned and and we will look at it uh, yeah currently we are doing policing it is okay. we are just dropping packets when they are it's the, the simplest way to do it and especially we, we had some technical limitations on the Linux kernel to do that because you can on, you can only do it on uh, bridge egress but uh, in this case is bridge ingress mm -hmm. so eventually we will get there I think that the kernel now has support for that but we have to keep putting, putting the, the pieces together okay. uh, so eventually we, we will be able to, to queue instead mm -hmm. of uh, uh, police but the ECN uh, thing is using um, uh, a protocol that works with uh, at IP level and TCP to notify the other side uh, to slow down. Yeah. And okay. Okay. Uh, second, I'm sorry. Second, uh, second question. Um, you mentioned the complexities of setting these minimum bandwidth uh, limits and the relationship to scheduling. Um, in other resource management models for other types of resource, similar, um, there's the idea of bin packing that, you know, as your VMs are being um, deployed, they're arriving in a certain sequence, and that, mm -hmm. you know, as, you know, the second one shows up, you have to deal with what's available at that particular point in time. But then there's an optimization cycle that says, hey, if we could actually reorganize based on the yeah. population today, we can actually get a better density or a better collection. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's controlled by the Nova scheduler at this point. Yeah, you have those two settings mm -hmm. to spread or oh. to pack. Okay. Um, do, do you know if there's work on, the, on, that, on that problem? Is there an open, is there... I think proposal or any kind of work being done there? You can, uh, once that we have, um, I mean, it will work together with the Nova scheduler. So mm -hmm. I think that that's a setting that you have currently in the Nova scheduler. You, okay. you can, I don't know the details because oh. I don't work too much with that, but I know that you can set it for mm -hmm. packing because maybe you want oh, to optimize your data center and shut so off nodes that you are not using and oh, save power. And so this proposal will kind of just naturally inherit that capability. Yeah, it so will go together with, uh, with all that. I don't know if uh -huh. we'll have something like to spread bandwidth in particular, uh -huh. but... Uh, okay, yeah, we'll thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so the rate limiting uh, or the bandwidth guarantee, is that only on the hypervisor switch? Or do you actually try and do something with the infrastructure? Because your destination could be outside your OpenStack cloud, for instance, uh, or even within the cloud, but it maybe is doing a yeah. hairpin with. So how do you actually make sure that the entire bandwidth is guaranteed from an end-to-end -end perspective? Yeah, uh, yeah, this is, I, I, I expected that question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are taking baby steps, I think this is, the first step is to do it on the hypervisor level. At this point in time, Neutron doesn't have any knowledge about the uh, architecture of your network. I mean, it's, the it's not a bit, yeah, it doesn't know the topology of your network, so it's not able to take any decision based on that. This is the first baby step. Uh, then when this works, we can look further and see how to how to handle that. Um, I, I guess that eventually we could be able to do that with the, the same framework that they are using, that they are creating in, in Nova for the generic resource right. pools. You could maybe specify uh, resource pools of, ex, uh, of external traffic or traffic on the switch and make sure that when the instance is scheduled with a specific amount of minimum traffic, that traffic is counted to the uh, top of rack switch and the other dependent switches or the external connectivity. Uh, you know, we, we'll have to look at that. Well, the other proposal I had in mind is these are APIs and you, it's a service plugin architecture, right? Why could you not write plugins uh, with the physical infrastructure against these uh, minimum bandwidth guarantee and that makes sure that the physical infrastructure that the plugin can configure does that as well for you? SDN, right? Right. Yeah, eventually you could that you could do that in your plugin if your plugin is aware is aware of your topology. Yeah. Okay. But it will have it will have to integrate also with the Nova scheduling to make sure that that happens. And okay. So. Cool. Thanks. So uh, first of all, on slide ten, can you go back to slide ten? Sure. You 
You had a number in there, 49, right? Uh, on your command, see uh, priority 49, is that a diff search code okay. point value? Yep, in fact it was, uh, because we, when we compare, uh, we had these problems with uh, direction of traffic. It was uh, implemented first uh, in the wrong way. Later we tried to implement it, it properly, let's say, with this policing. And we have some, uh, we had some problems with uh, difference be between the same uh, uh, rule configured for OpenV switch agent and applied by OpenV switch agent and uh, Linux bleach agent. Finally, we found that there is some bug with setting uh, burst value uh, for uh, in OpenV switch, and uh, that was the reason of uh, real bandwidth limit uh, difference. But uh, this rule is in fact exactly the same. Uh, it's made exactly the same way like OpenV switch is doing that. And uh, this you're answering the question I didn't ask. Uh, this <laughs> priority. In fact, I don't know exactly. Oh, it's, it's, not because it was it's not a DSCP mark, no. Then what is it? I mean, it, it's referring to a priority 49. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I didn't notice it before, so maybe we have to, to look at why do we have this. Or, or maybe uh, when you said that rule in the, um, uh, in the in the filters, you have to just give any priority. So if there are uh, other packets that match other filters, they are going to be taken in order. So we only have one filter. I think the priority really doesn't matter. It's okay. just we had to put any. <laughs> no, no, no. I think it's. A, I, I'm not sure, but I think that it's the the priority that the filters are going to be evaluated. But I'm not sure. We uh, we'll look at it for just in case. Another thing, when it comes to marking, um, just I would suggest you give some thought to the concept of not marking at layer two or layer three, but both, because typically switches are putting things in queues based on a layer two uh, marking, and routers are putting things based on a layer three marking. And even though the layer two marking is locked off as soon as it goes into a router, the layer three survives forever. But depending on how many layer two devices you have to go through, it's going to have to that's going to choose which queue it goes through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with the with with the with the current model and uh, ones that we have uh, the VLAN uh, the VLAN priority, you will be able to define a policy and set both. So it, cool. it will know shall work. Do, do you mean with the with the yeah. VLAN or if with? You're going to use ECN. Those are the two bits you use. <laughs> yeah. So we maybe we have to document. All right. That. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have two questions for about the scheduler. Um, do you have any blueprint or spec already um, in Nova, or are you going to mm. write it from? Yeah. That yeah. The, the, there are. I even if you go uh, if you go to this link. Uh, and you go to the, okay, I cannot show it there. But if, if you go to that link, uh, you will find the minimum bandwidth uh, guarantee proposal for Neutron. And from there, there is a link to the Nova one. Uh, look for something called a generic resource pool. Okay. That's the name for it. Okay. So it's, it's made not only for this, it's made for other so use cases like <laughs> storage and yeah. Routed networks. So my second question was, uh, do we have to wait for this generic resource pool discussion settle in the Nova? Yeah, I, I, you, I think that the, the discussion is quite settled. They, they, we just have to wait for the work. Yeah. I think that the, we can work on the first part that it's uh, configuring everything on the hypervisor level. So that's what we call the best effort minimum bandwidth guarantee. So if you have enough bandwidth in the NIC, your guarantees are going to work, but so we, we have two steps there. Okay, thanks. So thank you very much for coming.